a deal with Iridium to bring satellite-based messaging technology finally into the real world. I don't mean to cause offence, but we've been waiting for this kind of thing for a long time. Yeah, look, we're very excited about it. By the way, Ed, good to see you. Happy to be here. Uh, we're very excited about this announcement with Iridium, but I think I needed to probably step back and tell what it means. We work with them for over two years to really design this technology that could leverage their satellite network in a regular phone. It's the regular phone form factor, not a specialty satellite device, but that whenever you are in the globe, uh, you have the ability to be connected and send a message to anybody you want. And I think it's about redefining connectivity for Qualcomm Snapdragon to say, you are gonna be connected period. Well, let me right? ask that. Is, is that it? It stops at the phone, or do you see a business case where you can use satellite connectivity in other forms of devices, electronics? Great question. So the way we're thinking about this, and I think it's the beginning of a new era when satellite communication is going to be added to phones. So the way you think about communications, every phone and every other device have cellular, have Wi-Fi, and now you get ads set com. And we're talking about some very interesting use cases. For example, we're taking this technology as well to laptops. So a laptop, uh, even if, you, if it needs to send a message to the IT department or vice versa to unlock cars, think about you have a car and there's an airbag deployment, it's an important message you need to get out. There's an air, airbag deployment. Or how you put pins on a map, how you can uh, lock a, a car, how yeah. you can find a car. So, and I think it's just the beginning of a number of applications. I think this sort of sums up your tenure in so many ways, Cristiano. Since 2021, you have come on and you've told investors again and again, we are more than just smartphones, we are more than just laptops, we are about automotives, we're about getting into new types of devices. Is that the answer? How is that currently going to weather what is basically a worry around end demand for things like smartphones? Look, we are very proud of the company diversification strategy. And we said ex correctly, we were going to be see Qualcomm technology in Alto, you see Qualcomm technology in the brother IoT. But when I think about CES, uh, this has been an Alto show for us. We have <laughs> five uh, major announcements. And I'll start with something which is people didn't expect out of Qualcomm. We unveil a concept car. And people will say, well, Qualcomm, a concept car? And we're basically showing what's possible with this technology when you think about the car connected to the cloud, the Snapdragon digital cockpit, and ADAS and autonomy. We also announced um, that we have a partnership with Salesforce right. because car companies now, with all of those beautiful screens and all this connectivity to the cloud, are going to be talking to their customers all the time, not only when you go to the dealership. So all of a sudden, you need to do CRM in yeah. the car. We announced that we're in a second generation uh, autonomy chip. We announced that we now have ability to bring ADAS to entry level cars. So we're very proud of all the progress the company is doing in auto. And yet, Cristiano, end demand for cars is under pressure. We see that with Tesla's d d concerns surrounding that business at the moment. We've got concerns around end demand for so many products. Give us your macro perspective, your bird's eye view. When will we start to see a pickup in demand? When are you seeing a weathering of this current economic storm? Okay, I, and that's, that's a very interesting topic of conversation because this is an industry in transformation. So I think there's two aspects. One aspect, it's, you know, the macro definitely impact demand. Auto has been more resilient than other consumer sectors like handsets. And the reason is because uh, there was already pent up demand for auto for coming from the supply shortage. Uh, but, you know, like everything is impacted for the macro. But the other aspect is uh, exactly more interesting, which is investors are looking at car companies and asking two questions. Are you electrical? Are you able to electrify? And are you digital? And the digital is a necessity. Car companies are investing in digital very heavily because that's the future of the industry. That's going to define winners and losers. And uh, we see the opportunity for semis in each car to increase faster than growth of the number of cars. I'm going to ask you something about a school of thought that's building. The smartphone boom and bust cycle is dead. We are only driven now by the need to upgrade, as in the boom cycle is dead, I'm sorry. Do you agree with that? It's just upgrades that drive adoption, drive purchasing? 
Okay, so smartphones is today the world largest consumer electronic products, right? And actually you can think about computing, mobile computing now happen on a smartphone. Now, everybody in the world, few exceptions, have a smartphone. So it's a very mature market. So it just only grows organically. So it's a market that doesn't grow. So it has been now in all regions basically being driven by upgrades. So while the units are we still have not recovered from pre-pandemic levels on the total size of the market. But we see an interesting phenomenon. People, when they buy their next smartphone, and it's really an upgrade uh, uh, market now, they want a better phone. We saw, for example, with the pandemic, collaboration and productivity came to phones. People doing team calls and right. Zoom calls. They want a better camera, they want a better display. I think that trend will continue. And uh, we just launched 5G, 5G still being deployed. 5G Advance is coming. Uh, yeah. It's going to be the next big upgrade of 5G, and I think that's going to drive volumes. Cristiano, another trend amid the pandemic, of course, more to the negative rather than the different way in which we use our smartphones, was supply chain. That was actually one that you navigated very expertly, if I might say so. But just talk to us about supply chain headaches for you, for Qualcomm, for the industry. Are they in the rearview mirror now? Uh, I... As, as it relates to the supply chain constraint, we are a little bit in the rearview mirror. I think that has been largely resolved. Like, I can say today that we have no shortage on any technology. Other companies still have some shortage. They're, they're going to be doing better as we go to 2023. You're going to see some residual shortage on auto maybe all the way to the end of the year, but mostly behind us. So that's, I think that part is solved. The other exciting part is there's now broader recognition that semiconductors are important. I think important for the digital economy. I think with the supply chain shortage, if there's one positive thing is it was understood the importance of semiconductor companies. And there is this desire now to build capacity in different locations. You see of the United States Chips and Science Act, you see the European Chips Act, and those are actually building capacity in a geographically diversified way. That's in the, we're in the beginning of that phase and that's very good for the industry and for the long term. You have been uh, a regular returnee at CES, even when others have not. You were here last year in person. Can you just give us a sense about what it's been like this week. Have you met with many other CEOs, other executives, business meetings, or was this simply about the product announcements? Very busy. I, you know, I'd say CS is back to its full force. I think, uh, you know, Gary Shapiro did a great job. I think I see most of the companies are back here. He has been very busy, back-to-back uh, -back meetings, I think, with other CEOs, with partners. Uh, I think it's an exciting day. And, of course, CS has become a very important auto show. So automotive companies are here in full force as well. Now, I'm going to hold you to account on something. You've been talking about the pipeline for automotive for a long time. Will we start to see real revenue growth from that automotive business this yes. year? Look, we're, we're very proud of uh, the automotive business. It's a pipeline now in excess of $30 billion. And we did say uh, in our auto investor day back in September, by 2026, uh, that pipeline is going to convert into about $4 billion of revenue in 26, and it's going to be accretive to, mar to margins in QCT. We're going to get to over $9 billion at the end of the decade.